start with the pole? I mean, we don't see Bowling Green at the bottom. <laughs> well, as far as I'm concerned, it's at the bottom. Um, the pole is what it is. We we'll pay no attention to it like we have in the past. And um, I, I think we're, it says we're gaining a little bit of respect amongst the coaches and media in our league, and that's, that's about it. Where, where did you guys gain that respect? I mean, it had to have been more than just that big run at the end of last year. Yeah. Right? I mean, do you think? Yeah, I think so. I think people internally, um, the second half of the season was better. You know, we, we had a real strong series against Ohio State. I, I really thought our series uh, at Notre Dame was strong. Uh, we came out with a split. Both games could have went either way. The four-game stretch with Northern and Ferris at the end of the second half was poor, but then obviously they saw us in the playoffs, so they know um, this team didn't lose much. Uh, they know that uh, we're really uh, solid in goal, which, which a lot of teams want to start there. Uh, we're unproven offensively, but I think people know we can defend. And, you know, I, I think that's, that's where it is. It's nowhere above that. I think they put us where they did in, in terms of those, those polls because Lake Superior and Alaska lost a lot in terms of uh, personnel. Um, and like I said, our, our focus will, will not be, we will not talk about those polls at all in our locker room. That, they can talk about that amongst themselves, the players, because I'm sure they will. Uh, but ultimately, uh, it's, it's, it's out there and we'll leave it right there. Yeah, how much did the end of that season uh, do for the guys and training during the summer to get ready for this season? Yeah, I, th I think it did. Uh, we felt like in the spring it could have went either way. They could have sat back and done, hey, we're big shots and forgotten about the fact that uh, three weeks earlier we, we were in last. Uh, or they could have said, we don't ever want that to happen again and we're going to continue to with this push, this positive push. And I think it was the latter. The, 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 the positive push uh, took us through the spring. I'd say the spring was really good. The summer was good. We don't have all of our guys here like other sports do. Uh, half of our guys were here or just under half. They did a nice job. I think the guys that went home did a nice job. We've been basically going at it unofficially for five weeks. So we're, we're ready to go. Uh, and that last little run there um, gives you a little more purpose to what you're doing because you know there's a light at the end of the tunnel in terms of winning and losing. We try to measure things other than that, but all of us know that we're, we're measured in wins and losses, and we had a lot more losses and wins last year, but the, the last little taste was, was positive, and I think we, we fed off that pretty positively. And, and you know, we'll see again Saturday when we've got somebody in a different jersey pushing back, uh, but my feel is it, it's, a, it's given us some good vibes uh, since our last game. Can you talk a little bit then about what your goals are for this year? I mean, it doesn't sound like it's being measured wins and losses or plays. Yeah, I, I don't think uh, that'll ever be, for me, uh, measuring things in those terms. I want our program to be more consistent, and I'm going to talk about myself first. Uh, last year, in the first half of the year in particular, I got uh, way away from the process and the details and the focus of what our program is and got too caught up in the results, which we all know the results weren't very good. Uh, I want us to be more consistent as individuals within our program, day-to-day uh, -day focus. I want us to be more consistent with our collective effort, day-to-day -day focus. And, and what that leads to in terms of winning and losing, in our experience, will be positive. Uh, and that's what we expect. Our expectations for this year is our program to be consistent. You know what you're getting from Bowling Green, uh, whether it's in the classroom, in the weight room, on the ice. Uh, up downtown in, in terms of a community service uh, situations uh, and then again that starts with the coaching staff and me in particular so uh, we're not going to put uh, we expect this many wins or, or a home ice and we're not going to talk about that we're going to talk about a more consistent focus from this program and like I said it starts with me player wise and you you touched on Andrew a little bit that for what you guys are doing this year that is that's a good building block, a good foundation for what you're doing. Isn't sure, it? sure. I, I think that um, Andrew would be the first to tell you that, you know, he, he was real successful in junior, and then since he's been in college, it would, there's not a whole lot of success to go with all the, all the experiences he's had. And, and um, he wants to take his game from good to great, and we want him to take his game from good to great. It's been good, but it hasn't been great. And great, I mean all league. I mean a guy that's consistent day in, day out, and, and that's what we expect from him. And um, no reason to believe that we're not going to get that. That's what he wants. 
he wants to play hockey beyond college, well, he's got another year left to prove that he's capable of doing that. And he's going to be a focus uh, for our team. There's no doubt about it. But he's a, he's a strong guy. He's grown up uh, through his time here. And he wants better, not only for himself, but for our team and our program. And uh, I'm excited to see how he does this year. With that late run, and obviously he was a big part of that, and I know there were hiccups along the way in that run, but did, was that a point of him taking it from good to great? Uh, you know, I, I think it was a point of showing himself that he can take it from good to great. I don't, he'd have to answer what changed. I don't think anything changed. We didn't see anything change, but if you look at our team as a whole last year, it was, it was okay, progressing, fine, and then kind of got stronger as the year went on. Well, Andrew was probably a mere image of that. Uh, I'm not saying he was bad in the first half, saying he was fine. Uh, and, you know, could he have won us games? We're not going to think about that. We're thinking of the improvement. What changed in him? I don't know. I think his overall routine got more focused. I think his overall routine got more professional uh, in terms of this is what I'm going to do on this day, this day, this day, this day. And, uh, and ultimately it paid off in results in terms of games. Uh, and that's the best way I can put it. Uh, I know he really got a good positive experience. He was able to go to a, a prospect camp this summer with the Chicago Blackhawks. And, he got a chance to see how these people prepare, these young professionals prepare, and, and how important the preparation is, especially at that position. And uh, he's such a, a smart kid that he took that all in. He didn't just go there and it was cool to put the jersey on. He was actually watching how people prepare and their mental focus, because that's going to be the difference. Physically, he's talented. It's how his focus is mentally from day to day that's going to be the difference. And, and uh, Again, I've got no doubt that, that he's going to take his game from good to great, and we're just uh, we're really uh, excited to see how that, that, that plays out for him. Will you talk a little bit about your defense? That's a group that you have, am I right to say you have everybody back, right? Correct, yes. Yeah. Yeah. But yet, right, one senior? Uh, on, on defense, we have one yes. senior, that's right. correct. Yeah. Right. Two, Ryan Pelton and Bobby Shea, we oh, have two right. seniors. Right. We're, we're a decor, it's still going to have to defend uh, by committee. Uh, you know, we think that, that Perry and Cusera and Michael Sullivan as sophomores all played a bunch of hockey as freshmen. And then Shea and Pelton are, uh, you know, if you look at their freshman class and how many D were in that class and how many in the class now, they've kind of uh, survive is a bad way to put it because they made decisions, they made choices that this is what they want to be part of, this lifestyle, this culture that we're, uh, we're creating. Um, uh, we don't have that offensive guy yet, or at least a proven offensive guy. Uh, Ralph Freebergs is the guy we recruited to do that, and he's got some NCAA issues that we're going to take care of, and, and, and he'll, he'll, he'll play when he's able to play. Uh, but for now, it's going to have to be by committee, but I do think we can defend. I, I think that uh, we've got some more depth back there, so it's going to be based on how guys are performing on a daily basis as to who's in the lineup come Friday night, and that's a good thing. It's a good thing for all of us because it's the way it's supposed to be. Guys shouldn't just be going out there because they're one of six. You have, we, we've got eight or nine guys competing for those six spots on a, on a daily basis, and that's good. So I think it'll be by committee. And then we've got guys a little more confident, a little more uh, focused on, uh, on what their process is and what we need from them as an individual. And I think collectively it'll be a strong group. Uh, and that's, that's the best way I can, uh, I can put it. With Freebergs, are you, and I just without knowing all the details, is that, are you operating as if you'll see him next year, basically? Basically, yes. Okay. Yeah. Um, offensively, we, you had some guys who stepped up in your run. Is that... The next step is for them to step up over. Absolutely. I mean, they, again, I was just you know talking to the the league about this with media day that uh, all of our offensive guys need to be more consistent. We'll start with Cam Watala as our as our oldest guy, or one of the older guys who's put up points at this level. He's our team captain. He's a guy we expect his game to go from good to great. We we expect him to be our leader out there. Ryan Carpenter, DeSalvo, Burkle. Uh, and these are guys that have, uh, you know, for bits and pieces put up numbers last year. Uh, Rodriguez contributed at times over his over the two years we've been here. He's healthy. We think Moeller is as healthy as he's been in the best shape he's been in. Um, Williamson, we're not not quite sure what's going to happen with Bryce right now, but uh, we're we've got a lot more guys, older guys that understand um, what we expect from them. And then we've got four young guys coming in from the offensive perspective that have all put up numbers in their junior careers. And, and they're not guys that we have to put the weight of the world on their shoulders and say, if you don't score, we don't score. Uh, but they're guys that can contribute. And we expect them collectively to contribute, whether that's 
two guys this night and two other guys that night or whatever, it's going to be a transition for them. We know that. Uh, but we've got some older guys for them to learn from and some older guys for us to lean on in terms of the offensive output. And, um, that depth up, up there as well is going to pay off. Coach, how much more of a help is that this year for the Titans in terms of depth? That you have talented freshmen incoming, but you don't necessarily have to throw them into the fire. System. Yeah, I, I feel that's the way it's supposed to be. You know, you look at any of the successful teams on this campus or across the country, they don't have to rely on their freshmen. They can, the freshmen get to come in and watch the older upperclassmen uh, uh, operate on a daily basis, and they can learn from them. Um, and then what they contribute, they contribute. That, that hasn't been the case necessarily for a guy like Metallo or Carpenter or Burke or DeSalvo, but now that is the case. So a guy like Ben Murphy or Mark Cooper or Brent Tate or even Dejon can look at these older guys and watch how they operate on a daily basis and realize that it is a process and it isn't something that's just going to happen because they're here and they've always been successful. Um, they're guys that are they're going to have their ups and downs. Uh, but now we can kind of get through those ups and downs together and, and, and realize our program is still scoring goals, they're still moving forward, even as they're figuring it out. And, and that's, uh, to me, that's, that's the way it's supposed to be. And we're happy that this team has that, where, you know, even sometimes you have to take a freshman out of the lineup. And just let them sit in the stands and watch it. It's not that big of a deal when they sit up and watch it and see, hey, it is, it is a game I can be pretty good at. I just have to let it slow down a little bit. We're going to have that... Uh, that opportunity if we need it. Where in the past, man, you got to go back out there because we need you. Uh, so it, it's it's where it's supposed to be, and it's a uh, it's a comfort level for the coaches knowing that uh, that progression is isn't one that the, they have to do it all for us. They can learn from the older people, and uh, and I think they'll be able to. You mentioned both Rodriguez and Muller being healthy. Do you have a sense yet of if their conditioning level is good enough that we'll see either of them play this weekend? I think their conditioning level is good enough where they're going to be in the mix to play. Whether they play, we still have a couple days of preparation to see, but uh, I think their conditioning level has been good. I think they both made the most focused effort to get themselves in the best shape of their lives. I think both of them have, uh, have learned there's more in themselves when it comes to the, the fitness and the conditioning part, and, and uh, they're, they're doing a nice job. Now, that's because they're trying to make up for lost time based on injury, but um, you know, I, I think they're both fit enough to be in the conversation to play. When you talk about preparation, you look at a team like Niagara, like you guys, they return a lot of talent up front. What are some of the things looking to take that they do help? Well, uh, without knowing them great, uh, I don't know what they do well. And then I don't think they know what we do well. You know, we're, we're, we're basing it on, on what we saw last year. There's enough turnover. I know the coaching staff is there and some of those guys are there. I think they, they'll work really hard because it's the first day of official hockey season and we have a game that day. And we're going to be wearing a different color jersey than they are, obviously, and they've been hitting on each other for four weeks just like we have. So um, it's going to be a, a real intense, uh, I think, high energy type game. The execution probably won't be great, so it's going to come down to execution. It's going to come down to special teams, basically what every game comes down to, but I think it'll be sloppier than most games. So what they'll do well is they're playing at home, <laughs> which, uh, you know, that, that's, a, that's a benefit to them. And I think early in the year that can help them. I think playing Bowling Green is a, is a draw. It's a 4 o'clock in the afternoon game. It should be a decent crowd is what they're expecting. So I, I think it's more than watching what they did last year without really knowing. They haven't had any days of official preparation uh, just like us. So it's going to be more who can execute better under circumstances where execution is going to be difficult because they're going to be so amped up, so ready to play, so ready to hit somebody else, and yet it's the first official day. Now, obviously, you guys are used to playing games on back-to-back -back nights, but does that present a bigger challenge this time that you guys have a six-hour bus ride sandwiched between Saturday and Sunday? I don't think so. I don't think so. These guys are young, fit, strong guys. And uh, as you said, this is what we do every weekend. Now, the fact that we're jumping on a bus, that's when we're playing a 4 o'clock game on Saturday to get us back here at a reasonable hour Saturday night so we can turn around and and get focused for Sunday. I don't know no different challenges than any other weekend would. Anything else for Coach? Yeah, just one more, if you would, Chris. I mean, obviously you're a high energy guy, but it would seem to me like in, in this point, in this program's life, your excitement has to be even higher than it's been. Right? Yeah, yeah, I, I would agree with that. And, and not, it's almost so, because I, we see things happening. You know, we've seen results. 
the first year you don't know what to expect. I can't say I'm more excited today than I was when I first got the job, but I think there's more purpose to that excitement. I think there's more reality to that excitement. I think everyone at some level, at some point, has heard me talk about expectations that are unrealistic and he doesn't know, he's a new head coach and all that kind of stuff. I think there's a lot more purpose to our energy and our excitement level right now in that we've got guys returning. This brand, this culture that we're trying to create is establishing itself. It's starting to live and grow within our players. And uh, that's cause for excitement. And I do think there's a little bit of a buzz on campus that hockey's about to start again. Uh, a sport that once was great on this campus and we hope and believe it's going to be great again. And I think that, uh, you know, people want to come and watch some hockey, which is exciting in itself. Will you talk a little bit from a player's perspective? I mean, especially knowing it's year three of this program, there's you know, you're not picked to finish last in the league now. There's yeah, I mean, uh, I think everyone's just excited just because preseason seems so long. You know, we get here uh, second week of August, and you know, you go through the whole school thing and a new year, and then you're practicing and working out, and, and I think finally we see a little bit of a light at the end of the tunnel that uh, you know we're going to line up against somebody else and and have a little bit of fun. Coach mentioned that you guys probably will talk a little bit about the, the CCHA predictions that were released today. But do you guys talk about them at all? I mean, Not really. To be honest, I, I haven't heard anyone say anything. And, you know, I mean, obviously you see them, like, they're, they're right in your face. But, um, you know, it really doesn't mean anything to us. We kind of take it as a day-by-day -day thing. And, I mean, is it nice that you, you get a little respect from, from uh, guys around the league? Yes. But, I mean, you still have to go out there and earn it throughout the season. So. How much did that uh, finish to uh, last season motivate you guys with your uh, training in the spring and continuing on to today? I mean, it definitely motivated us as far as, uh, you know, we saw that our process is working and, and everything that's in place is starting to really take off. So, I mean, we ride the momentum a little bit, but at the same time, you know, that it's a new year and you have to go through the same grind and put the same amount of work in, if not more work, to, to continue moving on. And what does it mean to you uh, to be named on the Uh, I mean, it's an honor to know that that's what your teammates think about you. And um, But I really don't think that, and I could, I could speak for, for Carp as well, I don't think that it changed the way we go about it. Um, you know, it's every day you got to come show up to the rink and give your best effort and, you know, take care of other things on the team. But we really we don't have any issues as far as that because everyone has the same goal in mind and we all know what we're working for. So there's really no pushback and anything like that. So we just go about it, uh, about it normally. Uh, you know, I think everyone's done a really good job at that. And, and there's six of them, and obviously there's more of us returning that, that we kind of know the ropes a little bit better. And uh, there's really been no point where, where we've seen that they've been lost or anything like that. And if, and if it gets to that point, someone's always there for them to, to bring them back in or explain something a little better or uh, give past experiences that kind of helped us out to help them out. So everyone kind of takes that role on.